brought all these things out here. We're not engineers. You took our time. You took our time. You tell us where the money is coming from, where, uh, what are you going to do, what's your next step, and how our kids are going to pay for your stuff that's going on now. Okay? Last question, and then we'll go to comments, is how much money is the city receiving to displace our ways and for whom? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How much money is the city receiving to displace our ways and for whom? Yeah. This money is not designated for moving auto things. It's designated to make bicycle improvements. We've been using um, local measure our return dollars to make bicycle improvements. Um, we've done over 130 plus miles of new bike lanes over the last um, two years. It's nearly over 150 plus miles of new bike lanes the last three fiscal years. Um, these lanes in particular um, are, the one, are the, one, the only ones so far that have had a, uh, a significant traffic impact um, to our court, to our city and our family. Um, the bike lane projects themselves, reach biking is pretty affordable. Our projects are about fifty to sixty five thousand dollars a mile. Um, it's a very good It's a very good return on investment Thank you. Vehicle lane removals affect business. How does it affect business and how do I know that it affects business? Well, last year when the vehicle lanes were removed, the first thing that happened is business wasn't quite as good as the year before. And that was for the month of October. And then the same thing happened in November when we should have been getting busy. And then it didn't really start picking up until the second week in December. And it was slow in, it's still slow in January. Now, what does that translate uh, to when you're the city, the county, and the state as far as uh, sales tax revenues? Well, I can tell you, my collection of sales tax revenues was down about $2,500 a month. Now, multiply that times everybody on the street, not everybody on the street, but just multiply it times all the other businesses, and how much tax revenue are they losing? Because they want to, they want to say they want to receive sixty-five thousand dollars a mile to paint streets. Well, I'm sorry, that's a problem. That's really short-sighted, and it becomes even more short-sighted when I ask the dot. This is a problem, and they say, "Oh, that's not within our purview." So I go to the councilman. I ask him the same. The councilman's rep. I ask him the same question, and he says, "We're not going to change it." I said, "Then we've got a problem." Sometimes you have issues where you have to take kids to school. They need to be there a particular time. Uh, you don't, you're going to end up having to drop them off early because you've got to get to work. Um, this is an issue that is not going to go away if this lane comes in. Uh, there's another issue, too, that comes into play, and that's the fire life safety. Um, you have a fire station along Figueroa Street, number 12, uh, which op empties out onto Figueroa. Um, if the lane is backed up, now theoretically they're not supposed to be backed up in front of the station, but in reality that's going to happen. And it's going to happen every single morning. And if an emergency hits and they can't get out of the station, that's going to delay fire life safety issues. It's going to mean that fires are going to be more out of control before they get there. And more importantly, it's going to mean that the uh, ambulance may not be able to get to somebody who's had a heart attack quick enough. And it could mean the difference between life and death if they can't get out and get to where they need to go to. We will not be removing any lanes or any parking. On Colorado, we will not be removing parking. Generally speaking, is a lane. There was some misinformation about the concept. We just wanted to be clear. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, there's only one person in this room that can stop that traffic lane from being eliminated. And that's that man right there. So the only man that can eliminate or 
stop the banking. So if you want to blame anybody, there he is. There is no public order in this. This is uh, part of our master plan. There's a lot of noise that time here. But let's talk about safety. Frustrated, angry drivers stuck in traffic. We're talking road rage here. That's not very safe. Okay? Well, let's slow people down. It'll slow them down a lot during rush hour. But my real concern is that it's going to attract young kids to ride on a busy street that really shouldn't be doing it. My mom always told me, stay off the boulevard. I plan to go from one end of town to the other, never go on Colorado Boulevard. I've ridden these streets all my life, and I still do. Last thing I want to say, the DOT can lower the speed limit when they do the new speed survey. If there's sharrows on Colorado Boulevard, it allows them to do it. If there's a non-buffered lane going to the Eagle Rock Plaza, it allows them to lower the speed limit by five miles an hour. That will slow it down. It doesn't have to take away the car lanes to do it. Thank you. When you take uh, the only Class 2 highway going through uh, the Arroyo Seco and it's the only route the trucks can travel, middle of the day, you're riding your bicycle, there's a truck in that traffic lane, somebody pulls over and parks in front of you, swings their door open. Boom! Death Trap 101. You go over the door or you go under the truck. Not a healthy idea. Bike lanes on major highways, not healthy for us. Please, don't do it. I designed this route because it, um, it essentially parallels the Figueroa Street route uh, through most of its length. And I'll go over it real quick. Um, the route they're talking about on Figueroa goes from on the south end, San Fernando Road, up to Colorado Boulevard on the north. But once you get to Avenue 26, I take the route to the west to Huron Street, which parallels Figueroa Street. Huron is a fairly wide residential street uh, that could accommodate both traffic and bike lanes without a problem. Uh, I took it up to Cypress Avenue, then we would turn toward the east on Cypress and cross Figueroa Street taking Cypress back to um, Arroyo Seco, which is another street that parallels Figueroa at that point. Uh, Arroyo Seco it would take it up considerably until you reach Marmion Way. Marmion Way you would then take on a northeast, northwesterly direction, um, would take along the base of Mount Washington, 
Again, this is a street that's not as heavily traveled by as Figueroa by a long shot. Marmion Way literally just flows into Monta Vista. And then you would take Monta Vista two blocks to Avenue 50. Turn right or toward the east on Avenue 50, or actually toward the south by this time as the streets have kind of shifted around. And you would go to Marmion Way again. Uh, Marmion actually goes on either side of the railroad tracks, but at two points it only goes on one side of the railroad track. So what you were doing when you do Marmion Way is you're going to have what's called a shared right-of-way. It's a very narrow street that's really already posted for 15 miles per hour. Um, it is basically for local access so people can get to their houses along that route. It's not really designed as a thoroughfare. But for bicycles, it could be very easily. Um, uh, drivers on that route have to watch out for everything. Kids, bicycles, trains, the whole shot. The trains are in their right-of-way. If you, if you have the route along the roadbed itself, you're not going to have an issue with the trains. Um, when you get to Avenue 57, you have to go back to a single lane. Uh, between Avenue 51 and Avenue 57, uh, the bike route would be on either side of the uh, tracks. Uh, just like the auto route is. Now this route is much safer for kids because number one you have no buses along this route. There is no truck traffic on this road to speak of and there is no bus traffic on this road so you no longer have the high profile vehicles where it's hard to see especially children riding a bicycle. Um, when you get to Avenue 57 you have to go back to a, a one-way corridor where it would be two-way with the bike to take you up to Avenue 58 this would be on the uh, north side of the tracks. And then from Avenue 58, you would go up just to jog to Piedmont. Piedmont is a very wide street, um, but it's a very underused street. So again, you're still paralleling Figueroa Street, but you don't have the traffic issues that you have on Figueroa. So you follow Piedmont and take that all the way back to Figueroa. Figueroa at this point has very little parking on it especially on the uh, east side of the street, uh, which is by the Senior Center. Uh, you would take it up to York Boulevard, make a right on York, and we're already getting bike lanes on York. So you would follow the bike lanes on York until Avenue 64, make a left going north on Avenue 64, which already is a former two-lane road that has been cut down to a one-lane road. And again, it doesn't have the traffic that Figueroa does take it up to Colorado Boulevard and that brings you up to where it links in with the Colorado Boulevard bike lane.